Hello, everybody, or whoever is actually going to be here tonight. I appreciate uh, the fact that I've got a lot of major competition uh, for my time and probably picked a uh, the wrong night to do a live chat. But you know what? It's the way things worked out. I wanted to do something at my normal slot uh, at uh, 7 p.m. my time, 8 p.m. Eastern on Sundays. Just happened to be Super Bowl Sunday. But since I don't really care about the Super Bowl, that didn't really impact me. But I have a feeling uh, some people do care about the Super Bowl, so they may uh, be a little bit more interested in that than what I've got to share. But, you know, hopefully it's quality over quantity. So we'll have some people uh, dropping by to say hi. We've already got Annette in the house, so uh, thanks for joining, Annette. And this will just kind of be like a live chat. I'm going to share a little bit about uh, some of the items that I have in one of my display cabinets. About time to clean them. So figured, hey, let's empty the cabinet and see what ends up happening up, happening out, happening with everything. Uh, so I ended up pulling there and, uh, oh, look, like the Huckster Helper is here. So she is uh, on board from uh, Virginia is where she is bunkering down right now uh, bef until she starts back at school. And uh, Melody has joined. She she said she'd try. Uh, Melody has joined the uh, in between watching the Super Bowl and uh, some of the other activities that are going on tonight. Thank you for joining Diana. Uh, thanks so much for uh, Little Vintage Me joining on. I caught your uh, live, no, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a live, you did a premiere video, but the way you did it last night, Diana, was so like a live haul. It was almost like you, I wanted you to answer questions as they were popping up. It was, it was interesting to see that. Uh, Katie from Vintage and Vinyl just got organized enough to announce uh, the joint sale that I've got coming up for my live sale this week. So I just do all my live sales on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Last year, I always did at least one uh, 4S, 1S event, four sellers, one sale, where I got you know some people together. Did those fairly regularly, and then around Christmas time, they started falling apart uh, just because of some scheduling. And I ended up not doing one last month, and that wasn't really on purpose. It was just you know trying to get organized and focused. So uh, Katie will be part of my next uh, one four seller, one sale event. So this Thursday at 8 p.m. on this channel, you will have Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. You'll have Beth from Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. And you will have Aaron from Collection Vintage at Home. So I just posted that. So that should start showing up on my YouTube channel to set reminders. If anybody who uses um, StreamYard, if you know how to set, I know how to set in StreamYard so that it shows up on YouTube, but I don't know how it, to set it so that YouTube triggers a, um, a reminder. So like if you do a premiere, it gives you the announcement half an hour before the event, you know, I get from George, from the people I've signed up for. I understand that that doesn't happen when I do it through StreamYard. So there's a way to do that. But uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, it'll be four sellers, one sale, and I hope some of you will be able to join uh, Katie as well as Beth and Aaron. We've got our Canadian contingent uh, joining us, hey, Tia Fane. Probably, maybe you care less about the Super Bowl. It's entirely possible. Um, you know, Canadians love may love American football, so I'm not going to assume, but I uh, do appreciate you spending some time joining me. We've got Kim from Oh My Vintage. Uh, she is doing her live sales now on Tuesdays. And I just saw the reminder, and I should have written it down. I want to say, go ahead and drop a note in the chat, Kim. I want to say yours are they're Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. I can't remember if it's 6 p.m. my time or 6 p.m. your time. Uh, so she has started doing live sales. So definitely uh, make sure you participate. Uh, follow Kim at Oh My Vintage. She's also doing, uh, she's still doing unboxing videos for all of the mystery boxes she won from the Just One More Docs and Rescue. Uh, so definitely, I uh, used uh, she hasn't even, she hasn't even unboxed mine yet. So definitely keep watch, uh, subscribe, keep following her channel, and uh, she will. I think she's still got another ten or fifteen boxes left to go. So uh, lots of fun seeing what she won through the Doxy uh, Rescue fundraiser. Linda Punky joining us again. Thank you so much. We got now our New Zealand representative, uh, probably also doesn't really care so much about the Super Bowl. So appreciate uh, you spending some time with us, Nate. I uh, said hi to Annette already. Ah, we got Auntie Christy. Auntie Kay has uh, joined us from the West Coast. So thanks so much for joining. Uh, you know, this is going to be a little bit of a show and tell, a little bit of chat. And if you guys have questions, uh, some of the things, admittedly, 
I haven't 100% planned it out, but entirely possible some of these items will end up going into a live sale or will be for sale. Uh, one of my philosophies with my collections is I typically will dedicate a space and that space may be a very large space, but it's a dedicate a space uh, so that once that space gets filled, I then try and focus on increasing the quality of the collection as opposed to the quantity. So the 19th century stoneware collection, particularly what's here on the piano, that has been curated over about 20 years. Uh, but there's still items in the bookcases, which most people don't end up seeing, uh, that those are still, those will probably rotate as I find uh, new items. And so what's going to end up happening uh, here is the... Um, items that I'm going to be showing there, they fit in a kind of like a secretary style display cabinet. If you watched my video for George's, uh, the antique nomad show off your bunker, which is now uh, shockingly, it's almost a year old because he did that at the beginning of the current situation. I kind of showcase, I showed it as I was walking around, I haven't really showcased it much since then but it has changed a few times. So I figured I'm just gonna show some of the items. Some of them kind of the collections built up almost by accident. And as I was pulling things out to show and clean, I said, I, there was actually literally one item in the corner I didn't remember having. And it was because it got hidden by something else. I literally don't remember buying it. And I do not do not know how it got shoved into the corner without me knowing it. So, you know what, it means it's time to, to cull the herd a little bit and, uh, probably sell uh, some of these items. So if you see anything you like, just let me know because you know you might be able to get dibs on it before everybody else uh, going into a live sale. So since I have Melody and uh, may not have her for very long, not sure if Halem's there, he might be more occupied by the, uh, the uh, Super Bowl. I will start with the top shelf of my secretary and that is my Tabacchiana collection. And I've never smoked. So why do I have a Tabacchiana collection? So this is, again, this was basically built up over the last year and a half or so since I've been doing reselling. Uh, I kind of thought they were cool. And so I really like porcelain. I really like the shapes and the designs on some of these. So I kind of just started this collection and it's kind of overtaken things. So I'll start with the one that got tossed into the corner. Um, this one, it wasn't tossed because it is porcelain as all of these are gonna be porcelain because that's what I like. Um, it is a, well, it actually kind of looks like a tumbler. Um, it looks like just like a little cup with a scalloped rim. So it might be difficult to drink out of. But the reason I know it's a cigarette holder is because it was actually manufactured for Ronson. It was manufactured by Rosenthal. And I think that's why it, I still have it uh, because I'll be doing a deep dive on Rosenthal at some point. Um, and, you know, people watch me for a while, you know that uh, this household likes everything German and Austrian. So uh, it was just something I picked up. It's just, you know, it's got a sweet little floral decoration on the front. Very, very pale. I'm assuming that's the way it was designed. Um, I don't think it's faded, but it's kind of cool because it's got the little, the kind of the indentations and the scallops on the top. But I haven't, I've got a bunch of Rosenthal pieces that I'll be using in the deep dive. I don't have too I don't have any that have actually announced who they were for. So Ronson was a lighter manufacturer um, and, you know, smoking, et cetera. So it was a Ronson cigarette holder. So this is the only one that I've got that's this shape. So I do think it's kind of cool, but it didn't really fit with the rest of the others. And I think that's why it got kind of tucked, literally tucked into the corner of the cabinet and it was in the upper corner. It was dark. I didn't even do it. And that's when I, and you're right, Auntie Christy, when I was pulling this out, because it is the top shelf of a maybe seven foot tall cabinet. So it's, a, it's above my eye level. So I kind of saw it sitting off in the corner and when I saw the top of it, I'm like, why do I have an egg? Like literally, I'm like, why do I have an egg? And as I slid it out, I realized there were no feet. So you know, it didn't get quite the egg form, but definitely that's what it looked like. Um, so yeah, it's uh, that'll probably eventually, it'll definitely get sold after the Rosenthal deep, deep dive. So I don't know when that's gonna be, because I was supposed to have a deep dive tonight of uh, Lillian porcelain, and I will still be doing that, but I didn't get it recorded in time. And so I'm like, eh, what am I gonna do? live chat. <laughs> so I'm just bringing stuff like this up. So once I do the Rosenthal, this will definitely be sale, be for sale because this isn't necessarily a collection I particularly want to grow into. Um, but what I was trying to do was change things up a little bit because what started it 
with these collections, these little cigarette holders, which I will tell you are the perfect size also for sugar packets. Um, so that's when I sell them on Etsy. I actually list them as sugar packet holders because that's far more practical. But these were uh, Royal Worcester um, pieces, usually sold as a pair or as a set. And so you've got the oval piece that this would have been designed to hold the um, cigarettes. This then technically would be then considered the ashtray, but you see there's no indentations on this. So it's really, it looks like a coaster. And trust me, I've got a whole box of coasters. I'm going to sh probably show you really quickly too. Um, but uh, it, is a, it is a set. It is Royal Worcester. I really do like Royal Worcester porcelain. Uh, these have been manufactured into the 21st century, so they're not particularly rare, but it is rare that I actually get a set. So that's why this uh, was in my collection. I paired that together along with this one, but this one stayed in my collection because I damaged it. If you can see there, there's a chip on the side. So that stayed in my collection because it was damaged. It may get separated at some point. Hey, Shop Retro Days. Thanks for joining us, Chad. Um, thanks for parent pulling away from the Super Bowl. Uh, so again, tonight's just another, um, it's just a live chat tonight. Sometimes I do these as premieres. Sometimes they're deep dives where we're investigating one thing. Today, it's a live chat where I'm investigating the contents of one of my display cabinets. Oh, and the Huckster Helper is sharing something. God, she's going to embarrass the family, what she's saying. Uh, the lid on the butter tray makes an excellent sugar panel. <laughs> that is true. We have a, uh, one of the collections I started building was the uh, Hazel Atlas does a, a clear glass uh, uh, kitchen collection called Crisscross. And at one point I purchased the one pound butter container. And when it, re it came in, uh, I will never carry, I will never own a pound of butter, you know, not that I would put underneath a, uh, a dome. And so I'm sitting here looking at this going, what am I going to do with this? This is a weird shape. And so what we discovered is when you flip it upside down and put it on its tray, it's, it's very stable and it holds all kinds of sugar packets. So you don't need the little paltry one. You have, you got the big one uh, when you deal with the one pound, not the stick of butter ones. It was probably like three inches by six inches or so, you know, so it was, it was designed for a pound of butter. So yes, that was one of the discoveries that uh, Amelia, the huckster helper and I uh, came across because I really liked the piece. I love the Hazel Atlas crisscross because it is clear so I can put it in the dishwasher. I probably just lost some subscribers because I said that, but clear glass can go in the dishwasher. I will say didn't have as much luck putting the uh, snack tray in the microwave. So that I don't do anymore, <laughs> but doing it in the dishwasher, I've yet to have any issues, knock wood. Um, and uh, you know, you just have to find creative uses for items that really aren't that common anymore. Um, so Andy Christie is referring to something uh, regarding the, so she said, oh, so she, uh, so, okay. Yep. Yeah, that was one that she had gotten. Um, it's a perfect size for a lot of different things. It's probably, you couldn't put pens in cause it probably would tip over. Um, but it, it does fit tea bags, uh, and sugar packets really nicely. And again, they do all kinds of floral designs, this Royal Worcester. Uh, it's, it's not particularly rare in general. These sell for around $10 each. Uh, sometimes some of the, some of the designs are a little bit more rare. They might go up, uh, when you get them as a pair, they may go for 20 to 25 because as a, as a set, they have a little bit more value. Um, so they're inexpensive to add on. There are things that I was care picking up for sell for sale because they're easy to ship. Um, because they're very small, they fit in, I, I have a, I stockpile six by six by four, uh, boxes. And so it, it's a lot to be able to, to fit in there. Um, yeah, so that's so and somebody else I want to say it was somebody else that actually came up with that probably on Etsy or maybe on Instagram that they were talking about this is the perfect size for sugar and it makes it more saleable. It's just like when people start trying to sell cigarette ashtrays as chopstick holders or paintbrush paintbrush stands. Okay, we're not stupid. We know they're ashtrays, but you know there are ways uh, to pick that up and use it uh, in other in other locales. Um, so I see we get, we're doing some peer pressure on uh, Nate to do a sale. Be nice to Nate. He helps. He helps me with my sales. So we never want to. We never want to alienate Nate. Um, but so when the when February thirtieth rolls around, evidently Nate is going to have a sale. 
Uh, so a couple of the pieces I picked up, I ended up kind of, like I said, I started at building this collection because once I moved away from the Royal Worcester, some of the shapes were kind of cool. Um, so this one I liked, you know, I've got, I think I originally was bought this to go into the uh, Doxy fundraiser because I was getting all kinds of things with dogs. And I think I put it in my cabinet and forgot I put it there. <laughs> so this may make an appearance at the next fundraiser because it does have uh, dogs on it. Um, but it is a Japanese piece uh, with an M with a closed wreath. So I don't, I think that's one of the fake marks that that's not actually the Moromoro, Moromoto um, Noritake mark. I think the Moromoro brothers was an open wreath and this is the closed wreath. I don't remember. Um, I would need to research this one again. Um, but I don't know. I just think it's kind of, I just think it's cool. It's designed to hold, you know, cigarettes again. You could even put the full box uh, in that one. Um, but uh, it's kind of even got some neat detail in the back. You can see a little grid work pattern. But I think this is nice because this would be something like an equestrian, you know, somebody who is into that whole English hunting scene, you know, the hunt club or that even the dogs. Um, this one probably will, this one will end up going for sale. But like I said, probably in the fundraiser. A couple other basic shapes. Um, this is similar to the other ones I showed, but you can see it's got the scallop to it. Um, this is that uh, ect uh, cobalt. Um, I want to say it's Czechoslovakia, no, Germany. So they've got that really, 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 really dark blue with the gold trim. Um, and then their stamps are gold. So this is that crest is, again, these pieces are not particularly rare. Um, I just thought that was uh, a pretty piece and I really like that dark blue. So that was a slightly different shape. So I kept that. Uh, this one had a little base to it. Um, so this was also what I liked about this one too, because I'm a salesman, this one actually says on the bottom that it's a sample. So I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know, did when they were producing these in Japan, were they actually stamping them Japan, but then saying, Hey, this is like a production sample. Like, would this be what they would send back to whoever was ordering it to uh, approve the design? But so similar in shape, but it's got that little base to it. So I just like that. I just liked that one. Um, and yeah, so it's got the violets, the purple on there, Kim. Yeah, it is. It's very pretty. And it does have the white that's there around the violets. That is actually the Moriage or the Moriagi, uh, where it's the raised slipwear. So there is a, there's a tactile aspect to this. You know, what I think about it was interesting about a lot of these is they are like this next one. They're exceptionally feminine. So, you know, it's, I don't know if it's because females were smoking more or if it's just because they assumed the females were the ones decorating the living room or the whatever, you know, this one has the dimensional uh, flowers on it. Again, a very different shape. This was a label I wasn't familiar with, um, but it says it's Dresden porcelain. Uh, and I've not dealt with a lot of Dresden porcelain, so part of Germany. And so it's just got a lot of detail and it's in really good shape. They're not like super, super dimensional. Like I guess there are some areas you probably could chip the the, the uh, leaves off of, but this one, I don't think any, well, there is, there's this rose has a little bit of damage. Um, but again, this, I don't consider, I don't put this in the same category as like a left in, you know, basket or Capodimonte basket where the, the flowers are nicked off all the time. Um, you know, it's still damaged. So it's going to sell for less than a pristine uh, piece, but I will end up selling it. And I think that it still will hold some of its value because it is Dresden porcelain. I don't think you come across that very often. Hey, Bren, thanks for joining us from Hawaii. Um, you know what? A deck of cards would probably fit in a couple of the wider ones. I know we tried to do a deck of cards in this size and they do not fit in the deck in there. Um, I do think a deck of cards would probably fit into this one because this one is a little bit bigger and it's completely squared off. The problem with the other ones is they taper off so much at the edges, you don't have as much room to fit um, you know, something solid in there. Uh, so perfect for cigarettes, not so much. Um, so then you know, a couple other, this is Royal Copenhagen. This is a fairly common pattern that they put on a lot of other pieces, but this is the cigarette holder from that. Uh, this one was Winterling. Um, Winterling, Germany. Can't tell what the rest of that says, but another with the purple violets on there. So again, all of these are like super, super feminine. Um, this one, maybe this, I think those are Lily of the Valley. 
maybe but then i don't know what the heck that is underneath it like a freaking cactus or something so i don't know hey judy i don't know if that's like a stylized design i never it, i did find it on other pieces and it's very clearly marked um but i just i don't know what that's supposed to represent um the most masculine one i have is probably the coolest one that i have that's not necessarily related it's just um it's this so it's this dude that's got this big, um, basically holding a big crate. And from what I did on the research, that means that this is designed to hold cigarettes. Now, the ones that I found, I didn't find this very often. The ones I found, there was no lid. To me, this seems like maybe there should be a top to it, but it is, if, like, if I'm holding it flat, there, there's a slight slant to it. Not to, like that they're gonna roll out or anything, but I think if you had a lid on there, I'm not sure if it would fit as securely so maybe it doesn't have a lid um the other reason i think it has a lid is because this is a really high glaze but the top is actually almost more like a bisque porcelain so there's not as much of a finish there so i think if you had a lid that i think it would it if it was glazed or chip so i do think this had a lid but i never found one um, that had a lid to show what it would look like because he's got that little gold design still floral um but no, no, nothing really on the sides and he's not marked in any other way other than just japan so it's japanese porcelain i mean he's dressed like a bellhop so i would say he's probably 30s you know maybe 20s um but he would hold quite a few cigarettes um so i thought he was pretty cool so he that that's those are all the ones from my top shelf that was, like I said, kind of my tobacchiana collection, um, considering I don't smoke. Um, yeah, so I, he may not be Melody. He may not, he definitely won't be the first one I sell, but the, the shelf is getting a little crowded. Um, so I do think a couple will sell, but he is basically in the center. He's kind of like, he's not quite front and center. I'll show you why in a second. Um, so, but he'll stick around for a while because he, I've never seen another one like him in the world, in the, in the wild or anything even remotely similar. So he's cool enough that I think he deserves, even if I don't collect, uh, uh, uh cigarettes or I don't smoke cigarettes, who knows? I could put, you know, cigarette, so, uh, sugar packets in there. So those were all in the top shelf and they kind of were set up in a V with the little, and that's funny that you say the Philip Morris guy, Debbie, I didn't even think of that. I'd have to go back and look what the Philip Morris guy looks like, because to me, he was just like with that little, that little circular hat on him. I thought he was a bellhop, but you, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's actually a design from Philip Morris. I don't know. Cause I can't tell you what the Philip Morris guy looked like. So thanks for mentioning that. I'll have to check that one out. Um, oh, welcome vintage scavenger. I'm sorry. I try. I know a bunch of people joined uh, Judy. I think I said hi to Judy Bren. I said hi to uh, Chad. I think I said hi to, Oh, Debbie. I don't think I said hi to Debbie from Chicago. Um, I think I said hi to, to Melanie, Judy, Nate, Katie. All right, apologies if I missed anybody. I saw I could jump a couple times. So um, anyway, the, uh, so, okay, uh, Vintage and Vinyl saying hi to somebody named Logan. So clearly I missed someone because I don't know anyone named Logan. Um, actually, I do know somebody named Logan, but I didn't see him. Because Logan lives in Urbana, Illinois. Hmm, I don't see him. Okay, sorry. If Logan is here, oh, and Greg's here. Hey, Greg. Um, I was just thinking about you today. I was, I'm shutting down my booth at the end of this month and a couple of the chop plates that you were asking about sold. I'm like, oh, I hope Greg didn't want that one. Um, so thanks for joining us, Greg. Thanks for breaking away. I don't even know, at, let's see, Super Bowl has been going for a while. Is it, I don't know, halftime? Is it over yet? I don't know. I like, I'm, I should be embarrassed, but I'm not. I don't even know who was playing today. So I think Kansas City, maybe. I saw an email come through Friday saying, go Kansas City. And I'm like, oh, why? Um, so, you know. Uh, okay, and Amelia said she did see, uh, started looking it up and she texted me a picture of the Philip Morris guy. So I will show it on the screen really quick. Oh, yeah. So call for Philip Morris. He is. He's basically, I like the Philip Morris guy is a bellhop because there's a little hat. Now the difference is he's got a black cap and this one has the red cap to match his uniform, but I, that might be being overly picky. Um, that's cool. I'll have to remember that if I do ever, ever go to sell him. Uh, thanks Huckster Helper. Um, let's see. So, hey Brooke. 
the so I had the um, Philip Morris guy is oh and hey Jeannie the Philip Morris guy was at the base of the V and then I had all of the the, the traditional shapes I mentioned and then the the egg shaped one got buried but in the middle was a non cigarette piece and that introduces us into the next collection because this was my introduction to salt cellars not my introduction to salt cellars but this is your introduction to salt cellars. So this is a salt cellar that I get that I picked up and I want to say, I need to start writing things down. I want to say I got this from George at the Antique Nomad when we stalked him at one of his estate sales. So it's just this bear that has been bolted onto the, you, know, you can see the screw there, bolted onto this dual salt cellar. So it's just pressed glass. There's nothing special about the glass. It's in it's in good it's in good condition. The bear's in good condition. But check out this bear. He's like doing a yoga pose or something. He's literally standing on one foot with his other leg across across his knee. So you know, big bear doing a single leg pose. I don't know if these are common. I actually don't even know what he's made of. I'm assuming he's wood. I'm assuming he's got some age, but I've never unbolted him. So maybe he's a sort of a resin or something like that but he's just super cool and he is eh, probably is the tallest but there might be one that competes against that um of salt sellers so as i was trying to lay, lay out the shelving this got its own a pride of place at the front so he's front and center of the cigarette collection because heck you could use those as, you could use those as ashtrays um so but there's no label i've not found any others like him so i don't know what uh what else he's you know, if there's other pieces that also have woodland animals doing yoga poses, but uh, so that's the bear salt cellar. And then I have an entire collection of salt cellars. So the salt cellars, actually, I did not know uh, that the huckster helper, my daughter, was going to be here. Um, the salt cellars, she's partly to blame for the salt cellars, uh, but not blame, but uh, she is partly responsible for the collection having been built because. I've only been reselling for about a year and a half, but we've always been interested in antiques. We've always been interested in vintage. We've always been interested in weird and unique things. And so there is a pretty major and pretty famous uh, flea market that takes place in Kane County, Illinois, which is near to us. Uh, so we'd go to the Kane County flea market once a month. And, you know, it would either be her mom would be looking for something. I'd be looking for something. And our daughter, you know, at five, six years old is, is with us. So we'd always try and figure out something for her to focus on. Amelia has always been a very precocious kid. And I mean that in the absolute highest way, she's a very bright kid. She's also been a very, you know, she's always been a serious kid as a, as a infant, the number one, well, there'd be two things that we'd, we'd hear on a regular basis. One, she's super cute because she was, and she still is, but she was super cute. But the other the thing we hear almost more often than super cute is she's so serious. And that was the absolute, perfect summation of our child. Our child would sit there and like take in the room. Like all the other kids, all the other infants would be sitting there like playing with their toys and screaming and crying. Amelia very rarely cried. Uh, they'd just be like jumping and running all over the place. And she'd literally just kind of take it all in and she would analyze it. And people would notice, they'd be like, she's so, she's so quiet, she's so serious. And she continues to, do, continues to do that. So anyway, we started going to these flea markets and antique shows and different things like that. And we was like, okay, we give you a little, give her a little bit of money. And what we started collecting were salt sellers. I don't know why. I don't know how. I think at some point that like, some of them were kind of cute. They're inexpensive. They're fairly plentiful. And so we just started building this collection and we actually built up a decent size of it before we got to the point where people started giving us really weird looks because she'd ask about a salt seller. And then of course the seller would talk to us, the, the, the vendor would talk to us and we're like, um, no, they're hers. Like look down, that's her. And it was just, it was kind of odd. So, okay. Yes. Amelia has lightened up a bit. Um, yes, we, we wouldn't let her scream because we couldn't handle it. Uh, 
So we got to a point where we're like, okay, maybe this isn't the best thing for a seven, eight-year-old child to be collecting. So we moved on to uh, buttons. And so she started getting campaign buttons. She always loved history. As she was re- when she was really little, we lived outside DC. She's now a history major. She's going to, just, you know, going to go to grad school for museum studies. History has always been a real thing. So she started moving that. She started doing buttons for uh, presidential campaign buttons. That was far more uh, sociable, you know, for people to understand, oh, yeah, she likes buttons because they're cute. Not knowing that she could name the freaking president's vice president like that. That was just she was interested in that. So anyway, we ended up having this collection of salt sellers that I didn't want to get rid of. I've augmented it a little bit. Like I said, the little the little yoga bear, I, I bought that more recently. Now I'm really just on the lookout for kind of really cool salt cellar. So it's not like I'm just trying to build a salt cellar collection. I want to build something and I'm really looking for figural salts. But most of the ones that we've built up, uh, like this one's a made in Japan. Again, the cobalt blue. Sometimes we get them with spoons. Sometimes we don't. This one's a really uh, thin uh, bone uh, china, uh, translucent. It's got a little bit of a green, a green hue to it. Um, we, I, When I added some, I always try and add German ones. Uh, so I think this one's also German and we picked one up. I started this by saying we, um, the bear was the tallest one, but I've got a com- competitor and this actually Amelia and I bought together, uh, before our current crisis started. Um, she was doing a study abroad program in Germany for the year. And I flew over there for Christmas and for new year. And we were, we went to Vienna, Austria. And there was a flea market in Vienna, Austria. And we found this at the flea market. Now, doing a little research since I came home, I think the salt cellar portion, this little rams piece, there's these two rams with the bowl, that's technically a salt cellar. Um, I don't think that belongs in this cradle. This cradle should have a little glass dish or something that sits within the framework the little bamboo framework at the bottom. But somebody went to a lot of trouble to try and marry these two pieces together. And we had no problem taking it. So we now have this kind of cool, unique, um, and one of the very few metal salt sellers we've got. Uh, so that's probably, that's probably the newest addition of the collection. Um, or no, I guess the bear would be slightly newer. Um, we do have a couple other metal ones. Uh, this one is, the silver, a silver one with the gilt, um, the vermeil wash, because you would not put salt into sterling silver. It would uh, damage the silver. Um, this one's a little bit more modern. It's a um, carnival glass style. It's actually a berry bowl, um, but we took that and made that um, the salt cellar. Some inor- ornate ones. This one's not marked. We can kind of see it's footed with painted porcelain, you know, all around. Uh, and most of these, this is like your little useless tip for the day. Um, there ends up being things like, particularly when you get into these deeper ones where you start wondering, well, is it a salt cellar or is it a nut cup? And as it has been explained to us, as we were doing the research, if there's ever something on the very bottom of it, it's a nut cup because you would not put something on the bottom of a salt cellar that would be hand painted because you would take the spoon to scrape out the salt, you would damage the paint and then you'd have paint mixing in with your salt. So in that case, it's typically, if it's got an image on the bottom, even if it's transferware, evidently it's more likely a nut cup than it is a salt cellar. But uh, you know, it's, it was, it's a suggestion that's held true for me, but I'm sure there's thousands of examples that would totally say I'm making it up. Um, so a lot of pressed glass, pieces you know this is kind of like i don't even know what this is supposed to be it's like i guess it's just a log but it's been cut like it's like the joint of all the all the branches have been cut so it's a, this is a pressed glass piece spoons were harder to find so in some cases spoons got mixed in that didn't belong like this is actually a swedish spoon that has a deer in it and we just find the salt cellar that fit it the best because sometimes they don't fit very well uh, let's see, I've got a couple other, uh, another metal one that actually I think this is relatively new too. It's a little pewter um, acorn that I thought was a little footed acorn that I thought was, or a walnut shell, which I thought was cool. Hey, Nicole of Nesting Haven. Uh, some more pressed glass. I actually do have one of the few items in the house. 
that glows. I've got a Vaseline glass salt cellar. So I'm not sure if you're going to see it as well because I've also got the lights on, but hopefully it's it's got a good it's got a good glow. And I can't reach the lights to turn them off. So it's um, Vaseline glass. It's that yellowish Vaseline glass. But um, it's one of the few things. When I got the blue light, I uh, got this when Amelia happened to be here um, after she got back from study abroad. And I picked up the light. And we literally were like going around. I've got a huge glass collection. We're like running around trying to find it. And this was the only thing that we had that actually glowed. So I've got one piece uh, that glowed. Uh, this was a cool one. Happens to be another metal one. Um, it's got this cool, like a, a bust, like a little statue bust, you know, sitting in front of this bowl. I have no idea the connection to it. Again, there's no markings or anything on these. Um, so I just like the shape. Like I said, as I add them now, I want to find things that just, they're different. So like that one is uh, relatively new. Um, I like this one a lot. It's not particularly rare. But this is uh, Bavaria, and it's another footed one, but it's got the seagulls on it. And that is a is, shows up on a lot of different patterns. Um, but that one I just thought was really cool. It's very low, very wide. Um, and the one thing I never mastered was how to tell a master salt. I didn't mean that as a pun, but uh, how to tell a master salt from just an individual salt. This to me seems a little big for an individual salt, but it's not very deep, so I don't think it's a master. So that one I never, you know, didn't master it. Ha. Uh, let's see, uh, more glass. Oh, this was actually one of the ones I, sh I meant to, is it this one? No, this one, no, this one, damn it. Okay, one of these two is actually one of the first ones, and I think the one, I think it's this one, is what actually started the collection, If and I don't know if Amelia will remember, because she would have been like eight. Um, but this is a shell that has a flattened bottom that according to the reseller, the uh, seller at the King County flea market said came from the home of Armand Hammer. Armand Hammer did not live anywhere near Chicago. Well, I guess, I guess he actually did live in Chicago, but it's one salt. There's no, there's no crest. There's no information on this. She could have been totally pulling that out of her butt and wiping it off. So it's, but it was cool. And at that time, I guess it's, it, it, it may have been the first one or it was one of the first ones, because I think what we found was unique is it was a different material. Um, so I wanted to say it was the first, but now I'm thinking maybe we had a couple plain ones and then this one was cool because it was a shell. Um, so we liked that one. I did actually find this shell one, but I think this was later. What I liked about this is it actually had the shell spoon that sits inside of it that kind of matched that. Um, you know, some other ones I've got milk glass, I've got candle wick. Um, more pressed glass, more pewter. Again, I really like porcelain. So yeah, we've got the bucket design. You've got the really pretty porcelain. This one does actually happen to be stamped. Um, I can't read it. Hand painted Nippon. Um, so that was like the bucket shapes, got the handles on it. I thought that one was kind of cool. Um, little Austrian porcelain. That's why I picked up this one because it was footed, but it's from Austria and we like all things Austrian. Um, oh, and I like this one. Oh, this is the last one I'll show. A couple, all the others are pretty plain, but it's a Viking boat. It's a little Viking ship. So you've got the little Viking ship with the little medallions along the side. And then the spoon has the same medallions. So it actually, you know, is a match set. Um, this one had a sticker on it saying it was made in Norway from Husfliden Oslo. So I do not know my Scandinavian pewter manufacturers, but um, again, this is like getting into the figural pieces where it's just, it's just, it's a cool shape. You know, there's nothing wrong. Like I, I can appreciate the porcelain. I find this beautiful, but as you start building a collection, they're so short that they spread themselves out and it, you need things that have some height just to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so yeah, so that is, uh, I didn't count them, but Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 20. I've got about 22 to 25 because I just did that really fast. Um, so I've got a lot of salt, salt sellers. Again, most of these were uh, built up through Amelia's uh, help. And then um, um, 
some of them I've just added to that I found interesting. And yes, Nicole, this is, I basically wanted to do something tonight. So it's just a live chat. I opened up one of my cabinets and this is kind of the stuff that uh, myself and the Huckster Helper collect. So we already covered our Tabacchiana collection. This was our salt cellar collection. So, and the salt cellars is what she started out. So yeah, this is um, the uh, secretary that's in the hallway. Now, before I run out of time, because I don't want to be talking all night long, one of the things that is interspersed with the salt cellars and even not so much the tobacchiana, but um, is, say it with me, everybody, coasters. So this does not count. These are the ones that are on display. This does not count the coasters that I have in my living room. And we're, we don't need to talk about how many there are. But this is, um, these are the ones that are pretty much, I've got a little felt, um, cork liner on the back of it uh, so that it helps these sit upright and without sliding out. So uh, these are, I'll go through these relatively quickly because most of them, there's nothing particularly special, but there's usually some sort of a story behind them. So this one I picked up in uh, vintage. This is Royal Porcelain, uh, KPM Porcelain, but I picked this and kept it because this is Oberammergau, which is in Germany. And um, this was not during Amelia's study abroad. This was, she was probably 13 or 14. I think this was her second trip to Germany. We did a trip to Germany with her mother. Um, that was a, that was a cruise. That was a Baltic cruise. So we got to do a day in a bunch of different countries. Hey, Jackie. Uh, hey, Pamela. Uh, we, we did a bunch of stops in a bunch of different countries. And one of them was Germany. That was where Amelia was. Amelia started learning German when she was seven. Um, again, precocious child. And none of us spoke German in the house. Uh, so when we got to go to Germany, she we she got to practice uh, ordering food in German. Um, her mother didn't have a particularly enjoyable time on that trip. And to the point that the last the last stop on the cruise, um, she didn't get off the boat. So, you know, we we rec she recognized that Millie and I were having a blast. And she said, if you guys want to go back, you know, do something, why don't you go back? So we did another trip. And that time we did a trip to Austria and to Germany. We did seven or eight days in Vienna and then five days in Munich. Uh, so we went around, did day trips. And one of the day trips we wanted to see uh, Neuschwanstein, but I didn't want to drive in Germany. So we got a, a tour bus with all the other, with all the old people. Amelia was like 50 years the junior of the next youngest person other than me. Um, and one of the stops was Oberammergau, which admittedly, I'd never heard of it. So Oberammergau is known for two things. They do a lot of, well, three things, actually. They do exceptional wood carving. So from, like Katie might know of them from the wood carving world. Uh, they do amazing wood carving. They also have a very distinct style of architecture. And I, Amelia might remember what it's called, but they paint the outside of the house and they paint like folk scenes on them. And it's like a very, it's a, it's a, there's a term for it. And the other thing they're known for is once every 10 years, they put on the passion play. I knew none of this, but we had a joyful, we had a very fun experience. We just spent like a couple hours there. We did a couple stops on the way to New Schwanstein. So when I found this coaster, I decided not to use it. I decided to put it on display. So that's the Oberammergau poster. When Amelia did her German, her German study abroad, she was studying in Bremen. So this was a coaster I got for her because um, she shares my at least use of coasters, if not love of them. Um, so I got her a Bremen coaster. Uh, my first, my personal favorite is um, no, that's not my personal favorite. This I have never been here. Amelia has been here. I thought this was the Cathedral of Stevens Dome in Vienna. This is actually. Uh, in Cologne, Germany. I have not been to Cologne. Amelia has. Uh, so I picked this up. I liked this one because I liked the shape. I thought the shape was pretty cool. And again, if you're ever looking at these, you can look on the back. If there's holes on them, they are designed to be hung. So they're actually decorative plates. If you don't have holes, then typically it is a coaster. So this is a coaster. Oh, that's cool, Nicole, that you have ancestors from Bremen. Amelia loved Bremen. Um, I got, I can't remember what they were called. Um, they have in the town hall, there's a stacked set of animals and there's like a folk story to it. And so on Etsy, I found someone who made, I think the horse is on the bottom and then a pig. 
a dog and a rooster, I think. I can't remember now. Um, but it's like they're the they're the musicians of Bremen, and there's like this folk st folk story that they saved the town by scaring somebody by stacking themselves into a monster. Who knows? Um, I don't think I said hello, hello to Cheryl. So hi, hi Cheryl. Um, yes, we all need to be on the lookout for uh, uh, for uh, Nate's missing zodiac plates. So there we go. The city musicians. D. Yeah, the city musicians. Um, again. Amelia learned German all on her own because we did not speak it in the home. So she learned it on her own. Oh, okay. So it was a donkey, a dog, a cat, and a rooster. Okay. So no pig. Um, oh, and it's, a, it's, I didn't know it was a grim fairy tale. Okay. So there you go. So that's Bremen. Uh, this one I, just, I got because it was pretty. Uh, it was in West, Ger uh, West Germany and it's an Indian tree pattern. And I actually just like the Indian tree pattern in general. There's dinnerware that's done, decorative pieces are done, they do uh, tapestries, they do embroidery. It's a specific design um, that translates across all kinds of media. Uh, so I just like this one because I personally like the Indian tree, the look of it. Um, this happened to be a Kaiser porcelain and it was done in West Germany. So it had some age on it. So that one I just kept because I liked it. Um, I didn't even realize this. I have actually two Cologne cathedrals. So I've got two coasters of the Cologne cathedral. I've never even been there. Uh, this one, this is my favorite place is Vienna. Um, Amelia loves all things German. Um, I just, Vienna is an amazing city. I've been there twice now. I can't, I want to go back. Um, just the culture, the architecture, just the history, everything about it. I find absolutely fascinating. One of my favorite movies is, um, the woman in gold, which is not really a, something that I think that might speak low of me. Um, but I find the history and just all this stuff fascinating um the museums and anyway so this is the crest from vienna not even a marked piece it's probably a new piece but i put that one on display because i really liked it uh these two actually amelia were, we and i were together these were picked up on our trip to um in vienna so this was just uh not this past christmas but the christmas before uh before everything started shutting down what these are are Lufthansa coasters. So they are Lufthansa, uh, was it business class or first class? Mm, doesn't say, but it's the, the porcelain manufacturer I can never pronounce, Hutschenreuter. Um, so it's a, again, it's a famous hard paste porcelain manufacturer. These were done in the eighties. Um, this one, very traditional design, you know, very uh, Asian design. Um, but this one, oh yeah, this one had the date, 88. But check that one out. That's just cool. It's got the, basically it's a stylized version of the Lufthansa logo, which is like the little bird, um, but just in a super like, I, I don't even know what uh, kind of deco. I'm not even sure what that's trying to replicate. Um, you know, it's just, it's very, I think it's also very 80s. So I picked up two of these in Mobi Banana, Bananas Mobiliere, Mobil Mobilar, Mobil I don't know. I follow them on Facebook and every time they post, they post in German. I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying, but they've got really cool stuff. So these two coasters came home with us and those went straight into the cabinet because I don't know if they're particularly valuable. They, they're, they come up on Etsy on occasion. There's actually like something like there's at least four, but I want to say there might even be more in the in the line when Lufthansa did this. So I just picked up the two because that was fun that Amelia and I were together. She was the one doing all the translating because the guy didn't speak any English. And it was like, it was a test because yeah, Amelia's you know, basically fluent in German as long as she knows the vocabulary. And I'm like, hey, let's talk about porcelain. And she's like, crap, I don't know what the words for this are. Um, so as she, she did a lot with that. And then I had, um, I took these out of order. So I had the Viennese version of this I also have the German version of it. So these are both, uh, these were on either side of the cabinet. So one was for me and one was for Amelia, Deutschland, Germany, um, that, you know, those are the coasters. The last ones that I have technically, uh, it's it's a toss up of what you want to consider these. They're more the sizes of butter plate, uh, butter pats. What it turned into though, is it turned out that, and it started with this one, I will be doing a deep dive on this manufacturer, Lillian Porcelain. Eh. 
Lillian Porcelain. Uh, it is an Austrian porcelain manufacturer. They are still in business. They make a lot of restaurant and hotel china. Um, I found this one thinking it was a coaster, but when I bought it, I think I bought it online. I didn't realize how small it was. So it's too small to be a coaster. So I thought it was a butter pat. And then I think I found one of these other ones. I can't remember which one. Um, and then I discovered that what these are is they were designed for the Franklin Mint. They were literally uh, porcelain from around the world. And so it's literally, they got the manufacturers. So this was Rostron Sweden. They got the manufacturers to design a standalone butter pat, basically, but it's just a miniature plate um, that doesn't say anything about Franklin Mint. It's just, it's just gives ownership to the manufacturer. So when I saw the Lillian Porcelain one, I'm like, well, what is this? I don't know what this is. And it's, this pattern is very common. It's, uh, Alp, Alpin, Alpinflora, Alpine florals. Um, it's very common. It's on a lot of their designs, but I'm like, well, I didn't see that they made butter pats. And so I, after doing some research, internet, Google lens, fabulous thing, um, I figured out uh, what that was. And so then I ended up getting a couple more because I had one Limoges, so for Haviland uh, Limoges. So this one I thought was cool because I liked the quails on that one. So I picked that one up. And then I've always liked, let's, which one was this? It was Royal Dalton or at a glance, Royal Dalton and Royal uh, Copen, uh, Royal Worcester, look the, their stamps look the same. This one's Royal Dalton. Um, so this one's a bird one from Royal Dalton. I ended up stopping at the four uh, because I suddenly realized, yeah, Franklin Mint is not really something I want to be known for collecting Franklin Mint. Um, but they were really cool. I do love European porcelain. Um, so I thought it was cool that they added all that together. So the last uh, pieces, I want to, I think there's a chat going on um, that Katie's spending money. So let's see. Um, so she went to Florence. Okay. So, you know, so she went to the Florence flea market. Well, it's funny you mentioned Florence. Um, let's see. The one of the things that Amelia did while she, I see that Amelia was sharing with Nicole, um, talking about different flea markets and things. One of the things that she was able to do before she had to come home was she went to Italy. And one of the items that is now taking pride of place in the cabinet, everyone wants to talk about um, Murano glass. And to the point that I've always had a glass collection, I've never owned a piece of Murano glass, and I don't think you need to own Murano glass to have a good glass collection. They are very well known for their glass, but they are not the only ones. Uh, but Amelia went to Italy and she actually got a piece of Murano glass from Italy. So this, amazingly enough, she packed it well enough because we've taught her well. Uh, she was able to pack this and bring it all the way home to me. Uh, and give to, gifted that to me uh, for my collection. So I actually have a very, a, an original piece of Murano glass that we can prove because she was there. So that is, I only have a handful of things left because there's everything was like, it's their collections. That's what I'm trying to show you. The only other things that I are in there, there's only four items that do, do not fit into one of the collections. So there's a Tabacchiana collection, the salt, the salt cellar collection, the uh, coaster collection and then miscellaneous. So Murano glass horse, miscellaneous. What's ironic is this is one of the miscellaneous items in there and it probably, yep, it is the oldest item or the first item I purchased. I fell in love with this. Uh, this I would have picked up in before Amelia was born. Uh, so this would have been in the nineties. I used to travel internationally. Um, one of the places I used to go to was Southeast Asia. I traveled to Hong Kong. Uh, and one time when I was visiting in Hong Kong, I had the opportunity to travel to Macau for the day. Now this was prior to 1999 when Hong Kong reverted back to um, British rule. And it was before 2000, three when Macau reverted to also reverted back to Chinese rule. But the difference is Hong Kong was kind of the protectorate of Great Britain. So the secondary English, the secondary language was English. So a lot of the signs, most people, a lot of people spoke English, particularly in the restaurants and shops and things like that. Macau was a protectorate of Portugal. 
which I didn't even know was a thing. So Portugal owned, or whatever the equivalent was, uh, licensed <laughs> the, the, uh, Macau. So I suddenly went to Macau and I was fascinated by it because here are all these signs in the Chinese characters, you know, everything's in Chinese, of course, because it is in China. But instead of like Hong Kong, where all the Chinese was then underneath, it was all in English. This had all the Chinese and then under it was Portuguese. I do not speak Portuguese. I don't even speak Spanish. So, but I could kind of figure it out because I can't even look at a letter in Chinese and know what it's trying to say. But I could look at some of the words in Portuguese, which are very similar to the words in Spanish. And I could figure out things like the restaurant or the bar or, you know, different things. And so we went into one of the shops and this piece is a Portuguese porcelain manufacturer. So VA Portugal, the pattern is Magnolia. Um, I have never found another piece of this ever. I've even, I haven't looked recently, but I used to look on Etsy. I used to look on eBay. It's like this, this pattern just disappeared. So I just love the colors. I love the pattern. Um, I do like the Asian motifs, you know, that, so I like the fact that this really had a look of something, particularly in that rim, the look of something from China, but the fact it was manufactured in Portugal, which I, again, this was in the nineties, you know, I'm, a, I'm not even 30 years old. I don't know anything about any of this stuff. And also it was like, we're kind of like barely the internet barely exists. So it's just, I just found it beautiful. I picked it up. I don't even know what it's for, to be perfectly honest. It is simply a canister. Like I throw some Q-tips in there. I have no idea because it probably said when I bought it, I remember it was really expensive. I do remember that. And the reason this is the piece I bought was because it was one of the least expensive items that I could afford. So it probably said what it was, but it probably said it in Portuguese. So I have no idea. Um, but they also had dinnerware. Like this pattern should exist of in other things. I just never found it. So I just really love this. This is always, I, I always have a pride of place. I had this before I had the cabinet that we bought. And this is what the first thing that I put in there. Uh, so that's kind of one of the miscellaneous items. Uh, another one is a more recent addition. It is a uh, uh, Russian decorated egg. We believe it's Russian. I picked this up from a friend and she said that she thought that's where her uh, family got it. I brought it, I wrapped it up super well, put it inside something else. So I made sure it was taken care of. As I'm taking out the paper, I forgot that this was wrapped in and it dropped on the cement floor in the garage. So there's a lovely crack running right through this real egg. Um, that's how I knew it was a real egg. So it's just a cool egg. It sits in one of the salt cellars. I think it sits in this one because it has the right size. It has the right dimension to hold it up. So this weird little egg is in there. And then probably one of my favorite pieces, and this is also a Amelia purchase. And Amelia is 100% responsible for this one. I will be 100% honest because it was so ludicrously expensive. I didn't want to buy it. And she's like, come on, you can do it. You can afford it. She's like a little pusher. So it is a porcelain box in the shape of a hot cross bun. There's actually a name for this. I don't remember, Amelia, if you remembered what the style, I, I can't remember the German name for this button or this roll, um, but it is a porcelain box. So from a distance, totally looks like I'm about to eat a roll. It is actually a porcelain box. It is a porcelain box from our Augarten. Our, our, our I never learned to say this freaking name, Augarten. Wien. So this was our, our last our trip to Vienna at Christmas time. It was one of the few things that was actually open the week between Christmas and New Year's that we were there. They were giving factory tours. My fascination of the time was, or my uh, joke of the time was they were giving all the tours in German and then they had like a little handheld device that gave the English. Okay. It's like the old, like, I think Bugs Bunny used to do the car cartoon where some of you be speaking like all this foreign language and then the, the sub, the, the, um, um, not the subtotal, the closed captioning, you know, the translation would pop up and say, yes. And then you'd say something like, please. And then that would also, then something came up would be this super, super long. That's what it was like this. That's what this was like. This woman was talking for 10 minutes about what this one tool did 
I'm listening and I get like, it's a knife. And that was it. I'm like, what the, am I being punked? What is going on? So Amelia learned a lot about how man, how porcelain was manufactured and then had to try and figure out how to translate it back to me with, again, not knowing all the proper terms because I didn't even know how porcelain's made in the, in the United States. I love porcelain. I don't, I don't need to make it. I know how a kiln works, but that's not really how porcelain works. So this, it, I didn't really learn a lot, but it's an extremely high end, well known in Europe, not very well known here. Um, but it's an extremely high end. Like basically this would be the king would use this for their um, dinner service. Uh, this box, if I remember correctly, once it once the um, conversion went over, it ended up costing me over $300. So I spent over $300 for what did Amelia call it? A brochen, brochen. Um, so, but I have no regrets. It's the items you don't buy that you regret. You never I regret the buy ones you do. I have a great story to tell. I had a great time with Amelia. We were laughing our asses off um, because she knew what was going on. Like, I'm like, oh, please, please let me hit replay so you can hear what I just heard. And she'd be like, where's the rest of it? <laughs> no, there is no rest of it. So, and then they did have a table. Like one of the things you could do as part of the tour is like the special opportunity. You could get seconds. So you could buy damaged items at a much cheaper price. And let's all say it together. Trusty does not like damage. So I was built, I'm buying this obviously for my own collection because even damage, these puppies were really expensive. I'm like, no, if I'm going to buy anything, I'm going to buy, going to buy the good ones. So we bought a Christmas ornament that I think cost a hundred and a roll that cost a lot more. Um, but it's very cool. And that also is at the lowest point because unless you're looking at it from the top, you really don't see what this is. So I can't put it on a shelf that's too high because then you're just seeing the side of it. So I actually have it on the lowest, there's a, there's a desk portion. So it's like on the lowest shelf above the desk so that when people are looking at it, they're looking at it from the top so you can see my brochin. So that is my, uh, that, is, that, is, that is actually everything from, the, everything from the hutch. So, and I wanted to do this in about an hour and I kind of came close. So, um, so Jackie, talk, was Jackie asking about my salt cellars? Oh yeah, she's just correcting, so yes. Uh, yes, so my salt cellars, you must have missed that portion. So I've got all kinds. I think we came up to like 20 or 25 is what uh, what we ended up having. This was one of my favorites, the little bear and yoga pose on the dual salt. So yes, so, um, oh, I missed a curious cat. So hello, th thank you for joining. Uh, I was trying to catch people as they popped in, but um, you know, I get a little distracted. Corey joined us, so I think I said hi to Corey, but in case I didn't, hello, Corey. Uh, maybe I saw, I never actually saw Logan sign on. So I don't know how, if, uh, Katie just was omniscient and knew that, that Logan was lurking somewhere. Um, but, uh, and then I think I said hello to Pamela. So anyway, I do appreciate you all joining me. You know what I meant to do before I came on is I meant to print out the calendar. So I apologize. I mentioned, uh, Kim has her calendar or has her live sale. Corey's doing live sales. Corey, are yours on Saturdays now? I'm sorry. I meant to pull it up. I, I, I can't remember. Um, so Corey's definitely, is Corey, Corey the Thrifted Artist. You should be following her. Um, Jackie does live sales as well. I cannot remember when Jackie's are. Hers are earlier in the day, so I don't tend to be able to see all of hers. Um, I want to make sure, you know, get, definitely shout out. Vintage and Vinyl does chats a couple times a week, so definitely watching her. Uh, Nesting Haven used to be on, I think you, did you move to Friday? No, I think you used to be on Friday. I think you moved to a different date. So I apologize. So go ahead and drop notes for all you resellers. Hey, drop notes in the chat. I like to tell people when you, when you have, uh, when you have your, your chats and your shows. Um, and also like a lot of the people that I, I've called out, they also do content beyond the live sales. I have nothing, there's nothing wrong with live sales. Live sales can be educational as well. Um, but I feel there's a lot more that we can offer the vintage community. So I love supporting those who put out other types of content. Um, and everyone that I mentioned uh, does that. So um, I am going to uh, go ahead and sign off. I hit the hour, finish this. Let me know, you know, if this is the style that you like. Um, okay, got another lurker. Uh, Vinti, oh, Vintage Scavenger. That's Logan. Okay, that's why. 
Um, all right, uh, so thank you, Logan, for joining. Um, if you like this tile format, I mean, <laughs> I got plenty of other cabinets I could open. Um, like I said, this was supposed to be a deep dive that was going to be a premiere uh, that I was gonna record because it's a, it's a deep job I'm doing on my own. I just simply didn't get it done. So maybe I'll get it done for next week. Maybe I won't. Maybe it'll be a live haul. Who knows? But I'm trying to do all my content will be popping out on Thursdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern. So I'm always trying to have something. My live sales are always at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you signed on late, don't forget. Hey, Sheila, if you signed on late, uh, don't forget this Thursday, I am going to do a live sale, but I'm doing a joint sale. So this is one of the 4S, 1S, uh, four sellers, one sale. It is going to be Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. Uh, Beth from Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties, and Aaron from the Collection Vintage at Home. So make sure uh, it'll be on my channel, but you, if you wanna check out their, uh, they do live sales themselves, they post on Instagram, they do other content. You can check them out, see what kind of stuff they have. It'll work just like my normal regular sales. They are not auctions. We'll just be doing you know, first to claim. Uh, we'll just do round robin, robin rotating between the four of us. So hopefully you can join us at that point. And I'll probably be back doing something uh, next uh, next Sunday, but we just don't know what it'll be. So appreciate y'all joining me. Uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate you putting your trust in Trusty Hexter. Everybody have a great night. Bye-bye.